fact that it's been in Vegas and it's been in Madison Square Garden and London since time and immemorial doesn't mean it can't be in Riyadh. So I bought a house in, 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 in the Middle East years ago, so yeah, it's not sure. something, it's not a region I don't go to. Is there room for me? I'm very friendly, yeah, there's an outhouse down the bottom, <laughs> right, right next to this <laughs> house. Um, but I'm, um, so if he takes that fight, he goes to, he, then he fulfills his dream of becoming world champion or possibly becoming world champion. You've got to give Daniel plenty and plenty of praise. Welcome to Talk Boxing with Simon Jordan and Spencer Oliver. I haven't seen you for a while, Spence. <laughs> Lots of things going on and a big fight on my old stomping ground. Yes. At Sellers Park on Saturday with um, Richard Riakpour and uh, Chris Billum smith looking Yeah, forward to that. absolutely. Really looking forward to that one. It's a you know, rematch from that 2019 yep. classic, a barnstormer back in 2019. Absol absolutely. I think we get it again. But Simon, before we get into that, I wanted to get to obviously talk to you. We haven't had a chance to catch up yet about the... 5v5, the, the yep. big show out in Saudi yep. Arabia. I mean, before even we get to that, Turkey Al Sheikh come on the show. We was it was a mad story actually because we was we was coming back from an event out there. Myself and Ed Huntley, the uh, boxing editor, we're in the back of the car. Ed's phone goes from Turkey's people. Turkey wants to come on the show. Okay, all right. So Ed's like, okay, when when are we talking about? This is at like 12:50, something like that. He says now. Well, your show finishes obviously at one o'clock. Okay, brilliant. Pings in the number by 12.52. He's on the phone and talking to you. I mean, what was your take from that? Um, I, I, I was kind of ambivalent to it all. I mean, I was a little bit, my bum clenched, my cheeks did clench a little bit and my <laughs> feet did start to curl when Jim was calling his, him his excellency and how much of an honour it was for him to have, have him on the show. But I think it's an interesting one because he's a very powerful person mm. in the world of boxing at this moment in time. And the financial resources um, are making a huge impact in making fights that others haven't been able to make. Mm. And of course, then there is this rancor, isn't there, where there's been this reaction to observations that have been made and mischaracterizations of those observations. And I thought he was a, you know, clearly he's a boxing fan. Clearly they have a view that they, they want to be involved in sports. Yeah. And you can make of that what you will um, for their motivations. But right now, what boxing is doing is enjoying a real halcyon moment where big fights are being made. And it was interesting because, obviously, we'd been shut down, which is their right. They can shut down who they want, if they want. If they think that's a constructive way to operate, they can shut down who they want. Or they can deal with criticism and, and disarm it if it's wrong. Mm. Now, of course, Frank and Eddie are going to run around misrepresenting what people say because it suits them to, getting up on their high horse because currently, What's giving them huge financial opportunities are the Saudis and Riyadh season. My view was very simply, the fella came on, he had a view, he wanted to challenge some of the things and said that he had a, we have a right to be at the top table. And you know what? They do have a right to be at the top table. No one has a God-given right to own any sport, do they, Spencer? No. So the fact that it's been in Vegas and it's been in Madison Square Garden and London since time and immemorial doesn't mean it can't be in Riyadh. And that's fine. But if you want to be judged by those standards, then you've got to take criticism. In shock. And what I don't appreciate and have never appreciated is being told that a fair observation is something that gets you banned. And we were banned. Yeah. You were not allowed into press conferences. Mm -hmm. And Tyson Fury and his little gang, alongside the Saudis, excluded talk sport from, um, from major events. Sure. And that's fine if they want to do that. But from my point of view, it doesn't make you then somebody that um, you take seriously because despite the brilliant events if you do, if you can't take criticism then and it's fair criticism mm -hmm. it's not biased if you've got your pr girls running around turning around and saying that people like me are making these observations because they're xenophobic i'm not going to put up with that i don't sure. i don't work for these guys sure. i'm not going to jump on a plane at the first opportunity and run over to saudi just because i've been invited to do so mm. you know but i do think the man has got interest in thinking i do think he's challenging the orthodoxy i think it was interesting that he came on our show mm. uh, my first question would have been hi how can we help you rather than <laughs> how can we pay yeah, over yeah, for yeah. you um, but um, from that point of view I think there's a lot you guys are out there you guys are seeing it mm. you've been to the fights I'm looking forward to them putting fights on in this country and I think right now 
these are halcyon moments of boxing and I think it's interesting that you wanted to come on our show. Yeah, that, I think that, look, my take from it all was that obviously with what they're trying to do and, and with what they're trying to change within the sport, which is a good thing, and we've taken the politics away and we are getting the fights that we want, the, the fights that we've longed for for a long time. That's we've right. got this undisputed and we'll... Certainly in the big division, heavyweight divisions, yeah. Absolutely, and yeah. we'll break that down later in the show with this Anthony Joshua, Daniel Dubois situation, yeah. Tyson Fury. We'll get into all of that. But yeah, I think my take from it was only good for boxing because of the fights for the boxing fan the fights they want to put on and it's not just going here we've got august the third out in states we're going to get this uh, this fight september 21st anthony joshua here um yeah so i think my take from it was all very very positive i think from turkey ala sheikh's point of view well I you think, were out there speak, weren't you yeah i was speaking you were, you to, were out there yeah. in a press conference i know you were out there with jim and i think what the what the saudis want is they don't want a dissenting western media they want everybody on side hence the reasons why they called into a show that they perceive to be influential and have significant voices on it. They recognise the power. And some sure. people can say it's flattering. I'm Again, I'm ambivalent about it. I'm very happy to have strong conversations with people. But you were in Saudi. Yes. You sat in a press conference. And I have got some of the understanding of what was said to it mm. about what their, and their ambitions are. But I, I like some of their views. I yeah. think 5v5 is great. I think trying to create tribalism and team formats is great yeah. because it builds loyalty. I think trying to smash the dynasties of the WBCs of the world, I think, is great. Yeah. And cutting Change. through some of the nonsense is Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Changing the, the, you know, the, the drugging system and yeah. trying to improve on all that. It, it, listen, it's only beneficial for the sport. And I think the other vision that they've got and the other ideas they've got, I think, are going to be game changers and, and they're going to you know, move forward. And I think that that was something that they talked about. But obviously, they'll, they'll say that in their own time, their own vision, what they're going to do. But I think my take from when we had this conversation with Turkey Alishate was obviously recognising what talk sports, sport was. And I think that he's... The point he was making was, listen, I love Simon and I respect what he says and what he does. And, you know, if he, if he, if he comes over and he can see what we're trying to do and has a, you know, has a look at what we're doing here and has a look at the, the atmosphere that's here and whatnot yeah. and still feels the same, then fine, then let him speak like that. He said, but all I want him to do is come over and, and see fine. what we're doing. And that's fine. You're more likely to achieve that by not banning people. Um, but the point is... Will you go, by the way? Um, if an event comes up that I'm particularly motivated to go, see, I wouldn't not go. I, you know, I, bought, some... I bought a house in, 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 in the Middle East years ago. So yeah, it's, not sure. something like, it's not a region I don't go to. It's spare room for me? I'm very friendly. Yeah, there's an outhouse down the bottom, <laughs> you know, right, right next to the <laughs> house. Um, but I'm, um, I'm, <laughs> I'm, um, I'm very friendly with Nasser Al-Khalafi and yeah. that part of the world. I have a great deal of respect for what they want to achieve. I'm not interested in getting into the debate about human rights. The questions that we raised was about atmosphere. And, and I understand the reasons why yeah. the atmosphere. And I didn't even raise the pleading question. Jim did. All I did was, because Frank was getting aerated, was say you could hear a door shut. Well, and by the way, I, when I was watching the fights on, on DAZN in America, there still needs to be an, act, an atmosphere infusion. But, but that will come, I'm sure. Absolutely. And maybe sometimes the alcohol that we drink in this country and other parts of the world isn't mm. always the greatest thing that does that in the part creates sure. some of the atmosphere. Do you know, the, the, I think the problem, the problem that we've got now is, Simon, yeah, the, look, the atmosphere is maybe not what you get in England, and that's understandable because it's a new region and a new area and they're growing it. Yeah. So we understand, well, I understand all you of just that. just got to be I fair. Think, I think the problem that you've got now is that people are now going, oh, yeah, but the atmosphere is the atmosphere is You go, well, hold on a minute. Now you're just focusing on that when you go, well, we're getting no, the, fights that, the fights that we want. So you, you can't got, go, oh, the atmosphere is brilliant, but the fights are you, give, you know. You've got to give balance in every conversation. Absolutely. Right? You know, I don't like all the backside kissing and all the sycophancy, right? And that's why I won't get involved in that. And I thought it was very interesting that he himself, without prompting, addressed in the call, the idea that he has to be referred to as his excellency. He even said himself, I don't like to be yeah, referred absolutely. to them. You know, obviously yeah. when Frank and, and Eddie are stooping down and disappearing up his thorb, um, you know, uh, with his excellencies, they, they, they're doing yeah. it for their own motivations. I'm not cut from that cloth. I do respect what they're trying to do. I don't believe that it's without challenge. I don't believe it's without other motivation. And I do think that there is a danger that the economics of boxing could be destabilized to a point. I know that Frank and Eddie listened to 15 seconds of these observations and then turn it into a complete mischaracterization. If the, only, if the, if the economics of boxing are determined by what the Saudis are doing, because they're not worried about money. Yeah, sure. There's no commerciality to it. Yeah. And somewhere along that, that line, it might, not have, it might have a sting in a tail. But right now, they're right. Everybody's right. These guys are making the fights. Yeah. And they have every right to be at the table. And it's up to everybody else to be able to try and make sure boxing isn't just 
um, destabilized by what the Saudis are doing. It's enhanced. And right yeah. now, we're seeing great fights, and that should be the end of it. And the atmosphere co comment, you know, maybe it'll change, maybe it won't. People will make their own mind up, won't they? Yeah, absolutely. Listen, And the right to say it is a, is a fundamental right of the Western sure. press. And if you want to have a relationship with the Western press, then you have a debate with them. And if you're, if you're right in your debate, you beat them. If you don't, mm. you don't. But anyway, look, move on from the, um, the participation of uh, Turkey Ella Sheikh on a show, but look more importantly at the 5v5. I was in America. Yes. And I watched it. In, I was watching into Miami with Beckham's team um, and Lionel Messi and a superstar there. But then I was also in between the game and watching, I was watching the fights. Yeah. Um, which you sort of, you're over here doing stuff on football and you're watching the boxing. What's the matter with you? Well, I actually want to watch boxing a bit more. It was a great, great set of fights. All of them, I, all really of them were great set of fights. It really was. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, I think they delivered, you know. I think that we, we talked about it on the shows before, talking about the longevity and the concept of would it last? You know, is it something that's got legs? Well, the answer is yes. And I think that it's not, you know, it's not going to be just Queensbury versus Matchroom. I think there's other promoters there. I think Boxer have got a good stable that they can put in with Queensbury, with Matchroom. Yeah. There'll be other promoters stateside as well. Top rank would go come into that conversation. So, look, there is no longevity there. Bob, and I think you can keep is, Bob Arum out in the ring. <laughs> You know, diminishing other people whilst he's, whilst he's in there. You might get him on one of the 5v5s. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. That'd be a good fight for Absolutely. you. <laughs> for me, one I might be able to win, yeah? Is that what you're trying to say, yeah? Yeah, no. So, yeah, look, I love the fights. I mean, sad ending. Like, boxing has a history of that, doesn't it? With, you know, Deontay Wilder, Jale Zhang. You saw that. We saw it against Joseph Parker. The guy looked like a shell of his former self. And that underlined it, you didn't it? Was in that, uh, you said he was done. And I was right. And he was done. And, he, and what he got was a big bag of money. And some people would say that he was entitled to it because you put your life at risk. Other yeah. people would say, well, kind of getting money for not doing what he should be doing. But but that was the last, I think, we'll see of Deontay I think, Wilder. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I had, I had breakfast, actually, the following morning with Shelley Finkel and, and asked him that question. He said, look, Deontay's still in the room. We've not yeah. seen him. He's very upset, as he would be. He recognises yeah. that... It wasn't that he'd lost a fight. I think he recognises that now it's, it's time. It's yeah, he's, but he's, he's lost his identity as yeah. a boxer. Now yeah. it's time to, like you well, say, you said, sail up you? in the sunset. You said, I mean, I said this is the fighter that, it's like the old, you know, the artist formerly known as Prince. This is the fighter formerly known as Deontay Wilder. Yeah. His achievements were whatever they were. And there will always be this debate about this remarkable power, punch power, but the lack sure. of technical ability. Yeah. But he still was a major player, he a major superstar. He relit the heavyweight division in you know, many ways. Uh, he did indeed. He did indeed. Yeah. And it's a disappointment that we'll never see him fight Anthony Joshua because it would have been such a stylistically yeah. fascinating fight. But there were other fights on that card. Daniel Dubois did brilliantly to beat Hergovic. And Hergovic has been asking for this, you know, because he's got away with it against Zhili Zhang. And there's, you know, Mark Demori fight in, um, in, in December. You know, come on, yeah, nothing, come on, right? absolutely. But against, I think it was a Dempsey McKinley fought Dempsey previously. McKean, made yeah, a four-act yeah, player at that yeah, as well. Yeah. So fair play to Daniel Dubois. Because yeah. he now puts himself at the top table again. People have questioned him after losing to Joe Joyce. And here he is now. You know, a couple of itch, iffy performances, didn't he? Called Kevin Lorena. Yeah. But now, and I, and I wasn't overwhelmed with the performance against Jaron Miller. Yeah. Right? But this was a live one. This was supposedly the final eliminator for the IBF belt that's scattered yeah. after. The, so you've got to give Daniel plenty and plenty of praise. Absolutely. Listen. 26 years of age, people forget that yeah. about Daniel Dubois. You know, you know he's, he's on his apprenticeship. And I think this was a coming of age fight for him in many ways. He went in there against a live wire. He was the underdog. Whatever way people looked at him, whoever yeah. you thought he was going to go, 99% of the people out in Saudi Arabia thought he was going to lose. He went out there and he'd done what he had to do. Don Charles, did you think great he was going trainer. To I, th I picked, no, I picked him. him to win. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We, we both did. Yeah. Um, you know, and that was a lot because I'm sort of connected with Don Charles, go back a long way. But I saw what Don had done with him. Not the physicalities, but the, the psychological side, yeah. his mindset. And that was what Daniel needed working on, that yeah. believing the, the in belief, himself. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because yeah. he's and got tools. Yeah, and, and, and what he'd done was he went out there and, and he implemented that. And, he, and yeah. he, that showed in his performance. Yeah. I was very, very impressed. He slowly, systematically broke... But stole the soul, really, in many ways, of Hergovic. Mm -hmm. Hergovic, who I saw at the airport as yeah. well, was, you know, he was beaten he was up. beaten. Yeah, yeah, very, very beaten up. But he said, listen, it's the way it was. I was surprised at Daniel. Yeah. I didn't expect him to have that resilience to well, keep he, what going. What did he say? I'm going to take him to school. Uh, yeah, absolutely. No, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And he actually got took to school. He got took to school. You know, and so it was a... Look, a loss doesn't mean the end of a career. It, it can be the moulding of a fighter. In Daniel's case, it sort of was. You know, yeah. when he, you know, he lost to um, Joe, Joe Joyce. Joyce. Yeah comes back, Alexander Usyk puts in a good performance, yeah. but, you know, expected and, and he lost. But I think that was the making of him, teaming up with Don Giles. 
And he's put himself right in the mix now, you know, talking about well, September more, the 21st. More than in the mix, because my, we were led to believe it was the, um, the final eliminator for the IBF, which produces a conundrum for Anthony Joshua. Yeah. Because does Anthony Joshua, Anthony Joshua stepping in against a Philip Hergovic for an IBF belt has a certain feel about it. Anthony Joshua stepping in against Daniel Dubois, uh, another British fighter, and finding himself in a situation where if Dubois were to beat him, mm. you know what they're like, these fighters. Fighting uh, legacy fights against other British fighters determines outcomes of Absolutely. how they're perceived. Absolutely. So it's a conundrum for him, isn't it? Listen, the legacy is always... You're always remembered for those big fights. They're all British, you mm. know, the all British title fights. Could you imagine that if we get September the 21st, if the IBF do the right thing and yeah. strip... Um, Alexander Usyk of that title or he relinquishes the title you get Anthony Joshua Daniel Dubois Wembley Stadium all British heavyweight oh, title it's a proper fight. fight huge it's but here's where fight. it goes we've got obviously you've got Fury Usyk in the return if Fury can turn it around and he, and, and he may well do that yeah, we'll see. If, he, if, you know, if, if he comes up with a game plan and turns it around could you imagine Anthony Joshua out of nowhere here you get Anthony Joshua with, picks up the IBF if he beats Daniel which is a, an, yeah. an if as well Tyson Fury Beats Alexander Usyk. We get the undisputed again, the second one in under a year. That'd be great. And we, we discussed it before. It'd be interesting yeah. to see how the WBO, WBA, and then WBC look at that in terms sure. of uh, ultimately the other mandatories that might have to go with it. I also think it's worth mentioning Nick Ball. I think Nick Ball deserved to win that fight. Mm. You know, Ray Ford was talking a pretty good game before the fight about what he was going to do to Nick Ball. Good fighter as and, well. And he's a very good fighter. Yeah. And, and, and I think Nick Ball caught him by surprise because it was a properly challenging fight for both of them. I it think was. the Ray Vargas fight, I think Ball won that fight yeah. and was robbed. And I think it's well-deserved. And it'll be interesting to see where he goes next mm. and how they can get him... Well, he's now he's now, well, he's now WBA world champion. WBA yeah. world champion. So yeah. they've got an opportunity. But it's one of those divisions where they, you know, the, the money doesn't necessarily flow. Just get, get the unification again with Ray Vargas. Get that back on. Mm. You know, I think that that's the fight that now we want to see, you know, to right the wrongs of that last contest, that controversial draw. But I, I like Nick Ball. I like, he, he's Me a too. very infectious character yeah. out of the ring, you know, yeah. in and out of the ring because he's stylistically very good to watch, easy on the eye, TV friendly. But when you speak to the kid outside, he's actually a really lovely kid as well, which makes it, you know, which for me, I think that he's... He's a potential superstar of the sport. He really is because he's, he's got that likability around him. But he can fight. And, you know, he, he doesn't... He's one of those guys. He's got that championship material in him because he's one of those guys that doesn't lose heart. You know, when things are not going his way, he'll bite down on his gums. He'll like similar to sort of like a Cole Frotch type mm. character mentality where he just keep going, keep pushing, keep pushing and, you know, gets the results. I mean, a brilliant performance. Yeah, and Bivol as well. I mean, obviously, Dimitri Bivol against an opponent that no one gave much of a chance. Yeah. He came to fight and probably Zanid, came to yeah. fight a little bit too much. Yeah. Um, and I thought he hit Bivol with some good shots, but when Bivol goes through the gears, I mean... Well, it's levels, isn't it? It's levels, yeah. Mal Malik um, Zanid was yeah. one of those guys. He was game. It, it was about opportunity, right? Yeah. He come in there undefeated. You look at his card, I thought, right, let's check this kid out. Go on YouTube. Yeah. He's, boxing in, he's boxing in sports halls. Mm -hmm. That is the reality of it. But, he but up, it's about opportunity. He let, I mean, he let his right hand go a few times and he, yeah. and he did land a couple on Bivol, which was probably his biggest mistake. Yeah. Because by, <laughs> by landing those, it woke Bivol into a mode of form <laughs> that ultimately was just levels, weren't they? And we, yeah. we, it's an interesting time because if we're going to see Bivol versus better BF, because obviously in the horizon, in the ether, if we can get rid of some of the shenanigans that's going on between people fighting about who are they actually signed to, we want to see Boatsy versus Yard. Absolutely. Because Boatsy versus Yard leads to the winner of Bivol versus Better Beard, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that's the fight. Look, you, you mentioned two fights there, that are fights that we want to see. And then you're talking about, you know, the winner of Bivol, Better Beard. If that fight with Boatsy Yard doesn't happen, you know, there's an opportunity to move up. We've got Jai Apataya there, yeah. who's shown an interest. By the way, we'll talk about that with the June 15 card, Saturday night's card, with the winner of that possibly against Opatire. He showed a lot of appetite in that fight, by the way. He said he's got his, his keen eye on that and he wants the winner of that fight, Opatire said. Yeah, I heard him say there. that after yeah. his fight with Breedus, right? Yeah. Um, but you, you, you brought it up. We might as well pivot out of the 5v5. Yeah. Great credit to Hamza Shirez as well. Um, uh, Willie Hutchinson, big, Willie big Hutchinson, credit to him yeah, as well. You know, yeah. Obviously, Craig Richards has had a yeah. decent career and had opportunities in his own life, hasn't he? Yeah. In terms of potentially having that chance against Bivol, sure. where he shined in that fight. Sure. Um, Before but, we jump out of that, sorry, you, you mentioned Hamza Shiraz there as well, and I had him on Saturday Fight Night this right. week, and there's 
A lot of rumours circulating. Will that fight land on 5v5 versus Hamza and Suarez, Chris Eubank Jr.? Right. Now, Hamza Suarez said, I'm not that confident that fight will happen because I don't show, know that Chris will want to fight. But we know what Chris is like. He's a businessman. If the money's there, the right money's there, that's a fight. If that fight happens, by the way, do you like that fight? Hamza Suarez, Chris Eubank Jr.? Uh, I do, but I don't think it'll happen. You don't think it will happen? Risk reward. I right. think Hamza Shiraz is on his way up. Chris Eubank is wherever he is. With your Chris Eubank Jr., why are you taking this fight? Well, listen, there's not this, enough money this, in the this table. This is the situation for Chris Eubank Jr. I think there's a WBA world title shot on the line against a guy that not many people know, right? So if he takes that fight, he goes that he, then he fulfills his dream of becoming world champion or possibly becoming world champion. Or does he go down the business route and take a huge fight on a big card with Hamza Suarez, the kid that they're pushing? Suarez obviously wants to fight. I think some of it might play out of who's representing him. Right, OK. Who's representing Eubank Jr. because he's out of contract with Wassermans. Yeah. Um, and where he lands. Yeah. And who you know, we know who's representing Hamza Suarez. Yeah. So whoever's representing Chris Eubank Jr. might have better opportunities for him. Yeah. I'm sure we'll find out in due course. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Let's move on, as we just discussed, before, okay. before you pause me for a second, and quite rightly so about <laughs> Hamza, um, and go on to um, Chris Bill Smith yes. and Richard Riakpour, which has the potential of being a very explosive fight. Yeah. They've, been, they've done this dance before. I think both of them are different fighters than when they fought first time round. Yeah, nearly five years ago now. Yeah, well, Chris Bill Smith is now a world champion. And whilst I wasn't hugely impressed with his de first defence against Masternick, he went in and did a job against Lawrence. Lawrence Akoli's obviously gone up to bridge of weight now and won his world title. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and, and did it in impressive style yeah. in Poland, didn't he? Yeah. Um, and Richard Riakpour has gone through the gears of, 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 I was speaking to a mentor of his um, when he fought Glowacki yeah. in Manchester and he went in and knocked him out in four rounds, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. So the big thing with Richard is his mindset is now in place. Yes. He now has got a lot of confidence in himself and he's stepping in. He's got the power to do the damage. And he believes in himself. So now what you've got is two fighters that genuinely both believe they can win this fight. Mm. Both of them different and better than the first time around they thought. What's your, what's your Listen, view? Listen, I, I totally agree with everything you, you, say, you said there. As in, they are both much better fighters. You know, Chris Burnham Smith, he's had 10 fights since that fight nearly five years ago. He's had 10 fights, 10 wins, picked up the WBO. Richard Riakpour's had seven fights. He's been impressive. Mm -hmm. And like you say, he's found that self-belief. And that was the important thing because he's always, he's always had the attributes. He's always had the, 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 the technical ability, but not the self-belief. And that makes him a different fighter. But what we've got with um, Chris Billum Smith is that he's, you know, that he's become world champion and that's elevated him to another level. And that kid's will to win is yeah, something insane. Undoubted. So we've got a different fight here. I don't know if we get a different outcome, but we've got a different fight because you've got two guys that are pretty much at the top of their game. Mm. It's interesting if he's not spending his time with Madonna sitting on his lap. Um, well, that, this, this may be a problem. <laughs> oh, blimey, that's a fright, isn't it? You want to get in a ring and punch someone rather than that, that sat on your lap, wouldn't you? Oh. Um, but uh, you look at this fight and you look at the, the various component parts of it. I mean, obviously, we've seen Chris, and I think most people thought, and I know Richard Riakpour did, because we were at that fight yes. in May of, of last year at the Vitality, where Riakpour was prowling around the ring, waiting to call out, a Coley. Absolutely. Right? And they'd had a dust up in a cinema, hadn't they? Yes. It was all staged yeah. and planned. It was all set, wasn't it? Yeah. And so Chris came along and spoiled the party. Yeah. Lawrence has gone off and done his own thing and gone up a different weight yeah. class and suggested that it was a challenge for him to, to maintain that weight, yeah. and hence the performances. And we'll see if he does go mm. on to be more significant in terms of... He looked of, great against Rosansky, to be fair. He did look much better uh, at that weight. So I understand. Yeah. So I understand. Incredible. And obviously dispatched him. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty bloody quickly. Yeah, yeah because yeah. he had the confidence in himself. And the technical ability, which we yeah. know Lawrence has got. It's just whether yeah. he utilises it or not. Yeah. All right. So we've got Chris Billum smith against Riakpour. We've got this upsetting of the apple cart. You've got Riakpour preparing for a Coley. You've got Billum smith winning the world title. Defending against Masternak, which I went to and I wasn't hugely impressed. Well, he, asked, he, had, to, he had to ask but, himself a lot of questions he did the job. in that fight. He did the job. Yeah, he did. He so, showed character. Yeah, he showed... Well, one thing he's got is character. Yeah. And, and, and you know, he's got fortitude and resilience and both of them are very likeable yeah. fellas and both of them... My, my leaning is towards React Paul. He's a Crystal Palace fan. He comes into yeah. Glad All Over. He's fighting at Sellers Park. Do you think the fact that um, Billum Smith is fighting away from his home crowds and fighting away from... He fought, he fought at the Vitality, yeah. which was a memorable night for him. He fought at the Conference Centre. Um, 
in Bournemouth. Yes. Um, and was with very partisan hey. crowds. Yeah. We've done the vitality a couple of times now, hasn't he? So, so he's now fighting away from that environment. Yes. Yeah. Do you think that's going to help or hinder him? Um, it's a great question, Simon, because against Lawrence Acoli, this this used that as an example there, that crowd played a huge part in pulling him through that fight, really. I think that that, you know, was, yes, he showed character and yes, he showed a lot of enthusiasm in the fight, but there were times there when it was going away from him, he got yeah. hurt a couple of times, you know, as we saw in the last fight with React Ball, React Ball had Chris Billum Smith down. So stylistically, he's got though, you know, he's got that punch power and he will take the fight to Billum Smith. We know what Smith's gonna do. The crowd could play a huge part in this on winning and losing this fight. So home advantage could be crucial for Richard React Ball here because I think that Billum Smith fair play to him. I love that that he's stepping up and going into the other guy's backyard yeah. and putting it on line, knowing how hard that last fight was. Great. You know, that that tells you the character of the guy, but it's a tough night for Chris Billum Smith. It really is. Mm. I favoured Richard Riappo as well because, like, like you said, they've both gone on their great careers and they've developed and you know built themselves into great fighters. But I just think that the slight freshness is with Richard Riappo and that, that added confidence that he's got now will just tip him over the edge. And so he's a, he starts a, a very slight favourite for me. But you can't ever go against Billum Smith because. He's got the character to spell it do around. Think, do you think there's a psychological battle to be had here, given the fact that they're in the pros, not in the amateurs? Often what happens is people fight in the amateurs. Dillian White fought Anthony Joshua, beat him yeah. in the amateurs. Yeah. Right? And we've seen many fighters like that. Yeah. That's happened too. When they get in the pros, it's a different set of sure. set rules. But this was in the pros. This this defeat that React Port inflicted upon Chris yeah. Billum-Smith um, was in the pros. It was a split decision, right? Split decision, right? yeah. So, so it had its yings and yangs in it, didn't it? Do you think there's a psychological baggage that gets carried into this fight for Chris William Smith? And do you think there's a psychological advantage that gets carried in for Richard Reactor? No, I don't, I don't think there's a psychological advantage for, for neither man. And the reason I say that is because William Smith had his, he had his moments in that fight where he lost in that split decision. Like He had to pull himself off the floor, but then he also put, you know, he also put Richard under a lot of pressure. And Richard had to ask himself questions in that. It was character building for both of them in the fight. But I think he had enough success in that fight to go, now I'm the champion. I'm at that level. And that will have elevated him to another level. And he go, now Richard's got to come and take my title. So I don't think it affects him. But psychologically, Richard would be going, listen, I've done it before and I've had him down. This time, I want to keep him there. Do you do you smell a Wardley Clark sort of fight? Absolutely. Yeah? I, 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 can, I can guarantee it, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, just, just the styles of the, of the guys with what's on the line, yeah. you know, from both guys. They will fight and leave it all in the ring. That is a fact. I think we've got an absolute... A fight of the year contender here. Do you? Definitely. Do you? So you're going to, you're going down the same route as me, which is React Paul. Yeah, I'm are leaning you, towards React Paul. Are you going on a, a points basis or are you going on a conclusive outcome, which I'm, is a I'm, stoppage? I'm going on a close barnstormer points decision for Richard React Paul. I think we, I think we get a similar sort of fight to the first one, but with two much improved fighters. I, I got a feeling. And someone will have to get off the floor. I mean, floor. My, you know, my, um, my tips have been pretty poor recently, so anyone listening to this will go, shut up, you know, we talk How about. have I been doing, by the way? I, when, I, when I was in America, I tipped all five fights, and I was right on all five, but of course I didn't do it on air, so that doesn't, I don't have any proof for that. But I picked all five fights. I right? picked four. Did you? Right, yeah, because yeah. we picked them on the show, didn't yeah. we? The only one we got wrong was Hutchinson, who, yeah. credit where credit's yeah, I, due. So you must be right then, because I was we talking to someone else. We, didn't we went we? Craig Richards, didn't we? Yeah, we yeah. went with Craig yeah. Richards. I mean, so we went 4 1, yeah. You must also remember that, you know, another really interesting fight on the bill on Saturday night is, again, the re emergence of Ben Whittaker. Yes. You know, he's, um, he's a star, and there's a lot of opinions that are created about him, about the style in which he fights. I think charisma determines yeah but the fella that he's fighting storms his last press conference isn't he the african king yeah yeah, yeah that's how he got the fight yeah. you know he's what is he i think he's 10 unbeaten eight ko's or something like that. very strong typical Ghanaian sort of style where yeah. they come they fight they hold the ground but zuma nelson yeah zuma nelson yeah well yeah. zuma nelson was a class act so yeah. he goes he, he, he's a you know there was a little bit more to his game than just brute strength zuma nelson had a great boxing iq this kid from what i've seen He's more brute strength, yeah. and I think you got you need more than that against yeah. someone of Whitaker's class. Off, they, like, Whitaker. well, I mean, we've tipped Whitaker, and we we said he's the next star of British boxing, and I stand by that. And I hope and he I think is it's as well. a great fight for him, by the yeah. way, because this kid's going to come because yeah. it's about opportunity. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah. And Isaac Chamberlain against uh, Jack one smack Jack. Massey. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Love that is a that's a great fight as well. You know, you look at Massey and you go, look, you know, the, the, the loss to Richard Riat Ball was a close loss mm. as well. We give him a good, good fight there. You know, and then you go, he moves up. Joseph there. Parker fought Jack Massey as well, didn't he? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And he give I'll tell you what, with the Joe, Joseph Parker fight, that was last year, 2023. And Massey moved up to heavyweight for yeah. that fight. And he rocked Because he was working, on, he was working on a boots. building site at the time, wasn't he? That's yeah. right. He, yeah, that's yeah. right. Remember, it was a great story. He got the opportunity. He looked like he was going to retire. Got the opportunity. He hit Parker with a left hook yeah. in that first round and rocked him down to the soles of his boots. Look where Parker's gone now. Yeah, and that, look, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you go, you, he's got to be respected, Matty. Isaac Chamberlain's had a great... You know, he's done great himself. You know, he's had some good wins. He's picked up, you know, he, he, from, you know, if you go back to when he boxed Lawrence O'Connor at the O2, stunk the place out. The, the fight did. It was one of the worst fights I've, I've possibly seen. It was, you know, he was very negative. Both mm. guys were being quite negative, but Chamberlain froze there. But I think he learned a lot about himself there. He went on the he went on the road, took himself to America, training, sparring with everyone, and he's built himself and he's put himself into a brilliant position. It's a great fight that one. Mm. That's another barnstormer as well. We touched uh, briefly, um, or not so much briefly, but we touched upon the opportunity that awaits Daniel Dubois and the making of the fight with Anthony Joshua. And obviously the talking points that come from that are, is it going to be for an IBF strap? Are, are the IBF going to do the right thing and force, one, uh, force Usyk to vacate the IBF, which means that we can see mm. a, 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 a belt being fought for, in this instance, ideally by, yeah. by Joshua and Dubois, which could then lead, and Eddie Hearn is talking about the fact that that will lead to Fury v Joshua. It may. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it makes sense because the IBF, that they should do the right thing because, that you know, they, 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 he can't mandate his, no. his, his position. So, like... Should vacate it. Vac vacate it. Yeah. Give someone else an opportunity. Joshua gets the chance to become a three-time world champion. And then you've got Daniel Dubois gets a chance to become a world champion. And then we get undisputed again. I mean, I, listen, yeah. for the sake of the sport, for the health of the sport, I think it's brilliant. Yeah. A lot of people moaning about, oh, listen, we want to see the undisputed again. You go, but listen, the undisputed sat one between them two. Mm. You know, Fury's going to get his opportunity again. All the belts won't be on the line, you know, because we have to stick to the rules a little bit here. You know what I mean? Can't just go, oh, we want to see the undisputed against. We'll, you know, we'll, that, 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 Mandate no, 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 no. No, you have to. I mean, ultimately, you can't be a dog in a manger. Everyone else has got to be able to have an opportunity, as you quite rightly say. Yeah. The undisputed. I mean, some people make the argument that, that that in a rematch clause, you should have a rematch to get back all the belts. But there has to be an ecosystem where everyone else yeah. can get the benefit of. Of course. Not just two guys. Absolutely. I mean, that, that then does spiral into the argument. If you didn't have so many belts, it wouldn't matter so much. But I guess that's well, a different, that may different change discussion. In the future. But where would be? Where would Zhili Zhang and Joe Parker be? Because they seem to be. Uh, don't worry about us lads, you know, yeah. we, we're just sitting there minding our business. These are guys that are making um, significant strides. Absolutely. I mean, Julie Zhang was dispatched by Joseph Parker. Yeah. And Deontay Wilder previously to that. Zhang's got himself back into the conversation yep. after beating Deontay Wilder. Zhang obviously started the conversation by beating Joe Joyce twice. Yeah. What about these boys? Are they just sitting there as chopped liver? Well, they, 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 this is the, that's a great, great question. I, I actually spoke to Joseph Parker out in Saudi last week and said to him, Joe, like, You've coming off two back-to-back -back wins yeah. against Zelle Zhang and, and Deontay Wilder. Where are you at now? What are you doing? And he was like, "Waiting." great question. Yeah. Where am I at? Where am I doing? Because while all these titles are tied up, I tell you, when Daniel, du Daniel Dubois fits in the mix there, you know, like Dubois versus someone like Joseph Parker would be a great fight. It's a fight that I would like to see. And I think they've both earned that sort of right to... What, for an to IBF boxing. strap? Well, I don't, I don't know what it is. No, say if the IBF... Say if the, say if the Anthony Joshua and Daniel Dubois fight doesn't happen, because then yeah. he talks about they, that fight will happen if the IBF's on the line. If they decide to keep the IBF and they go undisputed again with Fury Usyk, you go and then, you know, Dan, uh, the Daniel Dubois looking for an opponent, you go, that would be a nice fight. But, but no, no IBF yeah, on the line. Can't, but, I can't, but I can't be right. No, but it? what I'm saying is you, you, you're asking it, about where they go. The answer is, I don't really know what, where Parker and Zhang fit at the moment because of this situation with, with the belts. Do you think they'd have another dance again? Because there was, well, was a, a good, the first there, there was, was a talk of there was the talk of those two guys. They both fought the same opponent, didn't they? Yeah. They both fought what you know what was left of Deontay Wilder. Yeah. Um, and obviously Zhang's outcome was more conclusive. Yeah. Because he well, it always stopped would be him. Because he, power he stopped him. Yeah. 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 Stopped him. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean. But it's interesting times, and what's happening is that these fights are getting made, and we're seeing them, and obviously the centre of that 
is the Middle Eastern money. Mm. And so we have to be thankful that these guys are getting the kind of money that they're getting, getting these fights. And we go around in circles and we see, I want to see Joshua fighting for the IBF strap. That's what I want to see. Yeah, I'm with, because, I'm with because you. Because that's what should happen. And that's the natural order of events. And I want to see it against yeah. Daniel Dubois as well, because I think the Dubois... And, 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 I think, and I think that's a really interesting matchup. Mm. I think that's a really interesting matchup. And I think it's a matchup. If I think if Hergovic had won that fight, they might have made that fight quite with Hergovic. Quite so they should do the same thing with I Daniel Dubois. And there shouldn't be any background noise about the fact he's another British fighter. Um, some other stuff going on in the world of boxing. Manny Pacquiao is... I'm glad you brought that up, yeah. Reportedly... Returning to fight, well, for the WBC welterweight title. Yeah, against well, Mario obviously, Barris. Obviously, you've got um, forty-five Terrence years of age. He's a WBC champion, but that now is in um, champions in recess. Yeah, recess. Yeah. So you're looking at now Manny Pacquiao being given the opportunity to fight for the vacant WBC title, um, and you just look at that and go, really? Like, on, on, you know, on what base? What, what does that say about the WBC? You go, this guy hasn't boxed since, when was it, like 2021? He's been retired like three years or so. Yeah. So how does he hold that right to fight fight for the vacant title? How does that work with the with, with the rankings? You know, what, what, what about number one and number two well, respectively? Does, it? it's, a, it's a stitch up. It's, yeah, ba- it's basically, this is likely to get the most and, money uh, and the most licensing about in boxing? Uh, Mario Barris. Mar- yeah, Mar- Mario uh, Barrios, yeah. Paris, Mario yeah. Barris, you know, he, he's a tough fighter. Only lost a couple of times. Very, very tough. And he's earned the right to fight for the w- WBC title if that becomes vacant. But not against Manny Pacquiao. I think that makes a mockery of the WBC again, if I'm totally honest. Because on what basis? You can't come off a loss, which he was doing against Ugas. Yeah. He, like, he lost to, he <coughs> lost to Ugas. And you yeah. go, and now he gets a WBC title shot. Yeah. Come on. And it wasn't the same Manny Pacquiao, was it? No, no. It was a guy that was a shell of his former self. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he's a 45-year-old man. So you're, you're, are you debating about the ethics of whether that he should be fighting at this age or are you debating about the ethics of whether he should be getting a shot I'm, I'm debating, without having fought for three years? Yeah, about the, the fact that he's getting a shot after not fighting for three years and coming off a loss. Well, doesn't, you know, just, oh, doesn't it just sum up the WBC? You know, I, I, well, it, it shouldn't happen. And if no, it, it should it's, um, yeah, it's, gonna, it's not, well, gonna, should it's not happen, a good look. What shouldn't happen... And, and we've been given a, a, a grace period for it not to happen is um, Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. So I was quite pleased to see that not happening. I know it's going to be um, rearranged till November and I'm hoping it won't happen there. Mm. But we've also heard, I've heard that Amir Khan is reportedly in talks to fight your little protege, KSI. <laughs> blame me. Yeah, well, you, yeah, you regularly take, you lay the claim for it, me. so you can have the blame for it. I <laughs> know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what did I do there? Um, yeah. Well, I what's don't know. What's Lin, I, I tell you what it is. I tell you what it is. Has he asked, is, is he, isn't he banned anyway? Right, uh, absolutely. I tell you what it is. Right. This is what this is what we've got to do here. This is what we've got to do. Is this is not a boxing fight, right? This is all about entertainment and about KSI and his little fans and and Amir Khan collecting a paycheck. I mm. think that you can't pull it. You, you've got to put this fight in Where the entertainment belongs, yeah. bracket. Yeah. Detach it from real boxing because it's not that. So if they want to go out there and earn a few quid and do what they're doing, that's fine. But let's not pull it in that boxing space because it's not. That's Absolutely. where I'm at. Absolutely. That's where I'm at. Absolutely. You know, look, we're getting these fights being made now. Like, yeah. we, you know, boxing is in a healthy state right now. You go, yeah. so that's got its own space and its own place. Enjoy it. Like, you mm. know, th- th- there's a market for it. I'm sure there is. But... Not with what we're talking about. Right, Spence. Well, nice to see you. And that is it for episode 76 of Talk Boxing. And we'll see you next time we're out with the outcome of one of the biggest British cruiserweight fights in years, Richard Reactor versus the defending world champion, Chris Willem-Smith. 